Hi guys and welcome back to Orchid Hunters Australia. Today we're in Victoria and I'm going to highlight a uh, winter species, just a single species today. Uh, we're going to have a look at a couple of the factors that support it, uh, a couple of the intricacies involved in the life of an orchid. So I hope you enjoy it. Now this orchid is curious because it looks and behaves like a normal terrestrial coming up once a year, but it grows almost exclusively on tree ferns. And not just any tree ferns, it doesn't like the rough ones, it likes the soft ones. And who doesn't, I say? Now if this environment looks damp, that's because it is. These moist gullies are a preferable environment for Coriosanthes gramula, and there's one other thing that likes cold dark places, and that's fungus. Under the surface there is an incredibly complex web of fungal activity here, and we'll scratch the surface in relation to orchids and ferns. Orchid seeds battle fungus to create a relationship where they can both thrive. The orchid seed needs a specific fungus to provide them with the nutrients they need, otherwise they can't germinate. An orchid may also hold fungi at bay when dormant. There may be a mess of different fungi that the ferns need and can be detrimental to the orchids as well and freelance fungi getting in the way in between. Ironically the fungus which are crucial to the survival of orchids and ferns don't seem to benefit from helping them out. Like I said it's complex. This species is not listed as threatened on the Flora and Fauna Guarantee Act 2014 and there is not an extensive amount of information available on it. Comparisons made with Coriosanthes dimenica allow a predictive insight on it. Coriosanthes dimenica is found in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. The Atlas of Living Australia has 49 records of Grumula, 23 in New South Wales, 23 in the ACT and 2 in Victoria. This orchid has potential to be one that can be enjoyed by many people without too much negative impact. Being in a raised position there is minimal chance of trampling. A poacher would have to be committed to cutting a fern down to steal specimens, which I don't doubt but helmet orchids can be easily grown and are commonly available so there's no real need. As the mountain helmet orchid was only identified in 2008, previously known as a subspecies of Dimenica, threats are generally unknown. It's easy to see that clearing and weeds can be a threat. English ivy here is seen to favourably compete for the fertile tree fern trunks and controlling ivy in this scenario may also prove to be a major disturbance to an orchid population. Fragmentation of riparian zones, altered hydrology and light levels, insecticides, fungicides and an increase in fire intensity could also prove detrimental. As well as requiring a specific fungus to germinate, orchids require a specific pollinator. In particular the helmet orchids generally need a fungus gnat. This red-legged earth mite is no friend though and was accidentally introduced from South Africa in the early 1900s and is a major pest that demonstrates resistance to insecticides. Some of the more characteristic features of the mountain helmet orchid is its epiphytic habit, deep rich purple colour and a prominent boss, that scented bump. Looking from the side the labellum has striking purple and translucent bands and a toothed margin. This is a particularly healthy colony with plenty of flowers and the leaves demonstrating the ability to be partially lobed. 